G'day, Martin here. So it's been a long time since I put up a video, but I thought I was just gonna do one, and that monitor uh, is falling over there, and that does not look great on camera. But anyway, we don't need it, we're Kelly Chaney. Or well, at least we will be whenever the GPS lines back up. Which is what I am here to talk about. So, now, uh, obviously, We've all seen the video of my review of the FJ Dynamics GPS. Um, and I know that because that is still one of the most popular YouTube videos I've ever put up, get some views every week. Which is saying a fair bit for a channel that I do not um, do much with. Now as you can probably tell, I am no longer in that case Magnum. In fact, I've changed colour. Uh, despite being in the same family and machine, and so as such, we're running an integrated um, Trimble GPS. It's the integrated Pro 700 screen. And um, yeah, that's, that's what we're running now. Uh, how do I feel about that? Not great. I much prefer the Green Star. Green Star is far more user friendly. And I don't have to sit around for ages like I am now, waiting for the GPS to start up because there's a few clouds above me. But compared to the FJ Dynamics GPS, that thing started to do my head in properly. I was fairly biased towards it when I did that last video. I'd just gotten it, still getting my head around it. And um, look, it's it was it was it was what it was. It was a cheap guidance system, but it was still a pain in the rear. And then when you, like I, Green Star obviously in the spray rig running SF3 and you know, running that was brilliant compared to um, FJ Dynamics. In fact, running that was brilliant compared to Trimble. Because with Trimble, I don't have to wait for that bar. I just turn on a key and my GPS starts functioning straight away. Anyway, so what happened? Basically, I needed a bigger tractor, so I got rid of the tractor and got this. Would I ever buy an FJ Dynamics GPS ever again? No, I would not. I would probably pay extra and go Trimble or go something else, I don't know. Um, and basically there's a few reasons for that. One, the system, it was actually reasonably user-friendly. was basic, but it was very user-friendly, very intuitive. You could work out how to do things um, pretty easily, but it was also a proper pain in the rear because of a few different things. Mainly, it was shocking um, for just shutting down and going off course for whatever reason. Um, and like I was only spraying at 9k an hour or something like that, and that was bad enough. Um, your steering wheel would just suddenly spin because it would either just disengage and wander off of its own accord, or it would just spin the wheel on you, go full lock in one direction, uh, like sound an alarm and shut down. Like it was, it was weird. So you'd have to grab the wheel, line up and just re-engage. For the most part, I just had my finger on the screen, just ready to re-engage it every time it came off. Like it happened like once a run. Um, and up here in Delungra, we don't have big runs. I think my longest run's probably like a K and a half or something. So, yeah, that that just, it, it wasn't working. It was not not something I enjoyed. And like, quite frankly, it was pretty dangerous. Um, the other thing, talking dangerous, was the steering wheel. You really had to fight the steering wheel. Um, you always had to engage and disengage with the button uh, because while in theory, you could disengage it with the steering wheel, it would fight you, and it loved a good fight. Um, so that made that fairly difficult. Um, yeah, you'd, you'd end up wrapping the cord around because the mount that I had set up wasn't brilliant. It would just like start ripping the ripping the wiring loom around the steering column. Um, what else? Uh, memory on it. Memory was tiny. So about three in the morning one day on a weekend, obviously. Um, the GPS just stops working, will not function, just keeps crashing every run. And I've got this error code coming up in Chinese, um, which isn't great because I don't speak Chinese. 
or read it more to the point. So that would come up and I've got no idea what I'm doing, how to do it, how to react, I had no idea. Eventually I was able to call the dealer and he told me uh, what that is, is that's just um, the memory's full. You're just gonna have to go through, delete all the memory. And like, you know, I've got 200 and something hectares um, here, 240 odd hectares, a couple of sprays a year, planting, you know, once a year, maybe twice if we're double cropping. Um, you know, that memory filled up pretty quick. It filled up within a year, like it, it wasn't much. Uh, I found that the acre meter, like, you know, on the screen counts the how many hectares you've done. Uh, it would just throw random numbers out for whatever reason. Like, uh, you could start a headland and it would say that you've done 20% of the paddock and um, just give you a number and it would sit on that number for ages. Likewise, it may still say you've done 20% of the paddock when you're nearly done and the whole paddock's mapped, shaded. Like, I don't know. I don't know, it was weird, it was clunky. It went in a straight line, but you know, it was really, really basic. I was told a lot of that could be fixed with a software update, but I could never get it to update. Uh, you've got to call your dealer and call um, FJ Dynamics to actually um, get the software update. Uh, FJ Dynamics were a pain in the rear because they just wanted to sell me a new system. I'm like, no, I just want to update the software, see what happens, and they just kept trying to sell me a new system. Um, the dealer was meant to have lined up an update, uh, and probably did, but, um, you know, we, we didn't know whether they stayed online because of the nature of contracting, whatever, a tractor could be 50 k's away. And I set up the update and I just could not get back to it. Um, so that, that yeah really sort of limited things there for me that monitor is really annoying me there in the background um so yeah that that was that was a bugger um and like i had to i tried hot spotting wi-fi to it i tried um it had a sim card in it and i could just never get it to update no matter where i was um and how much reception i theoretically should have or should not have had um, yeah, so overall, like, the, the platform, it was intuitive, sort of went in a straight line. Uh, it wasn't particularly safe, again, just on that steering wheel thing. If you did grab the wheel, it would try and fight you. And what else? Um, look, that was pretty well all. Um, yeah, not a lot of memory. And um, I just can't think of much else that, that I had. Honestly, I'd never buy one again. It just did my head in. Yeah, you know, I could live with the receiver at you know, the base station, requiring a second set of batteries. That was fine. I just had a second set of batteries charging in the cab. And when they went flat after about 11 hours, like you weren't changing all the time, just put the next set in. Put the ones from it in the cab, just fire away. That was fine. But yeah, there were just there were all sorts of dramas that just did my head in with it. And uh, yeah, I will not be going back to it. So, summing up, if there's anything I missed, um, let me know. Ask me a question because I, I will try and answer it. But yeah, much happier with this. A lot more horses, a lot more powerful. Uh, makes pulling my air seed up a dream. Uh, as I said, the straw that broke the camel's back was sowing last winter in the wet. The old girl just was not doing it. But I really hate this over Green Star. It is just taking forever to get a correction signal. It's doing my head in, and every time I go near a tree, it drops out. I never had that in the spray rig running Green Star. I mean, you're going a lot faster, I guess, so you're away from the tree a lot quicker, but I think I only have lost signal once, maybe twice. Anyway, that's it from me. Until next time, keep at it.